All right, so the last pickle recipe you will ever need is kosher salt, sugar, and vinegar. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons. I release new episodes every Wednesday. Okay, maybe I should explain this a little bit better. In order to talk about pickles, we need something to pickle. So let's start with the king of pickles, the cucumber. I like using English cucumbers since the skins are edible. To slice them, I'm using my Japanese mandolin. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to grab one for yourself. It's honestly one of the most used tools in my kitchen. Now, this episode isn't going to be about learning a specific recipe, but rather understanding how to pickle something. So welcome to Pickle Theory 101. The first thing we need to talk about is salt, specifically kosher salt. Diamond brand is one I use both at home and in restaurants. Do not use table salt. Iodine will give it an off taste. Salting the cucumber will draw out water, making them crunchier and taste more cucumbery. It also acts as a preservative, which will help the shelf life of the pickles. Now, you're probably already wondering, how do I know how much salt to use? Well, the simple answer is, taste it. It should taste salty, kinda like eating a salty chip but not so salty that it's inedible. Now as for sugar, this is optional. Sugar just helps to balance the saltiness and acidity of the pickle, and how much you use is entirely up to your preference. You can use a little bit to just lightly balance it, or use a lot for something more like a bread and butter pickle. I never go that sweet with mine, because after all, bread and butter pickles can go f themselves. But again, just taste them. Then just allow them to sit until they've released a bunch of water. If by this point they taste too salty or sugary for your liking, just rinse them off in some cold water. As for the vinegar, absolutely any kind will work. I personally prefer rice vinegar since it's a lot more mellow and slightly fragrant. Pickling vinegar is not necessary, and the only reason I have this jug is because it was the cheapest one. But this also begs the question, how much is enough vinegar? Answer, until everything is submerged. But if, unlike me, you don't like a sour and acidic pickle, just dilute them with a bit of cold water. Congratulations, you've just made a quick pickle. This technique will work for most vegetables, like this carrot I got from the farmer's market. It's a uh, little over a month old now and kinda limp, but that's exactly what pickling was made for, to preserve food. So before you throw out your next vegetable, give it new life by pickling it. When doing carrots, my go-to is usually julienne or matchsticks, but you do you. I generally don't add sugar to my carrots either, since they're already naturally pretty sweet, so I don't think it's needed. Now, most vegetables won't have the same water content that cucumbers have, so when you go to check the carrots and there's barely a teaspoon of liquid at the bottom, how do you know if they're ready? If you can do this to it, they're good to go. The more water in a vegetable, the crispier and rigid it is. The less water, the softer and crunchier it is. But what about a really hard vegetable like beets? Now granted, these beets are kinda soft already since they're also from the farmer's market and are also a little old. But the same principles still apply. For something hard like this, we need to tenderize them first. You can do this a few ways, like roasting them in an oven but the quickest way is just to simply boil them in a pot set over high heat. They don't need to be peeled or cleaned either, just toss them in whole. To check if they're done, stab them with a knife or something pointy, and if they slip right off, they're done. Beets will stain pretty much everything, so just be mindful of which surface or cutting board you're using. And also, 100% use gloves for this, unless you don't mind having pink and purple fingers for the next few days. But hey, I'm not here to judge. Any dirt on the beets will have come off in the boiling water, and the skins will peel right off just by using your fingers to push against them. Since these ones are pretty small, I'm just cutting them into little wedges. Being half Ukrainian, I ate an obscene amount of pickled beets as a kid, and even to this day, after cucumbers are my second favorite pickle. 
But before we get into pickling them, let's talk about another of the most common pickles first. Onions. Because onions are hard, but also very pungent, we want to make them tender and a bit more mild in flavor. This applies to hot peppers as well, and since I didn't have any on hand, here's some stock footage instead. For onions, slicing them thin, but not paper thin, is usually preferred. And you know what, since we're here, let's change subjects for a moment and dive into Slicing 101. Curl your fingers back, kinda like an eagle claw, with your thumb always positioned behind. Make sure you have a stable grip. You'll notice that only the very tip of my knuckle is sticking out, and it's high enough that even when slicing up and down, the edge of the blade never even comes close. Then just slowly slide your fingers back, using them as a guide while maintaining a grip. And remember, speed comes with practice. For the beets and onion, we're going to be doing a hot brine instead of a quick pickle. This will essentially cook the vegetables while toning their flavors down a little bit. When doing a hot brine, you definitely want to thin it out with some water. As it reduces, the vinegar, salt, and sugar will become more intense. As far as how much of each, salt, sugar, and vinegar, you guessed it. It should be salty, sweet, and acidic, but not inedible. Bring to a boil over high heat for a good 5 minutes or so, then immediately remove and carefully pour over the sliced onions. The boiling hot brine will almost fully cook the onion, but they'll become fully tender and pickled after sitting for a few hours or overnight. Until you end up with something that looks like this. Now full disclosure, I boiled these in the brine for about 2 minutes just to speed up the final result, so they're a little bit more tender than what I would prefer. So if you want a really soft pickled onion without any crunch, this is the way to go. Then bust out your fanciest mason jars. This wonderful thing is a mason jar funnel and will make your life a million times easier. Except if you're lazy like me and trying to just pour it directly in, instead of being smart and using a ladle. So use a ladle. Oh, and bust out your fanciest paper towel and cleaner as well, as pickling brine is super sticky when it dries. So now that you've mastered the bare bones pickling techniques, where do you go from here? Well, you can literally add anything to make them your own and suit your individual taste and style. Some of the most common pickling ingredients would be garlic, of course, bay leaves, peppercorns, chilies, coriander, mustard seeds, dill, and fennel seeds. But honestly, the sky's the limit. And that's it, the last pickle recipe you'll ever need. So what's your favorite pickle? Tell me down in the comments. These pickles will last for literally months in the fridge, but if you're looking to can them properly for extended shelf life, there are a million videos on YouTube that will show you how. I keep mine in the fridge, and they get eaten way too quick for me to ever worry about shelf life. Now you're probably asking, Tristan, are you seriously just gonna sit there and eat pickles? Of course not, don't be silly. My girlfriend and I are gonna sit here and eat pickles. I'll have links in the description for all of the tools used in this episode. And if you like my channel and are interested in supporting it, you can check out my coffee page. I'll leave a link for that in the description. I'll be adding tiered monthly memberships there shortly as well, with bonus content. But of course, the easiest and freest way to support the channel is by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Thanks for watching, and stay awesome.